Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at arithmetic sequences and series. Before we get to that, uh, some, just some generic work with sequences and series here in our warm-up. Go ahead and pause here, work through, find all of this. All right, number one. That one's kind of tricky, but uh, you might have... Just kind of skipped that one. That's a kind of a hard one. You might have skipped it and gone on to number two. And if you skipped it and gone on to number two and looked at the, uh, the series that was generated, uh, you might have seen that you were adding up two and six and 12 and 20 and 30. So number one is just in terms of n's, n squared plus n. Kind of cheating there. You got it from number two there. Uh, but later, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how you could actually come up with this without having to get the help. So number two, as we plug in a one, we would get uh, two, and then we plug in a two and get six, and so on, so we're adding two, six, 12, 20, and 30, and you do get 70. Uh, number three, uh, we would get the decimal 0 0.54, 54, 54, 54, 54, repeating, because it goes on forever and ever, we looked at that, and so it turns out that if we have two digits that repeat in our decimal uh, after the decimal point, uh, and those two digits themselves add up to nine, that uh, it's something over 11. And this turns out to be six over 11. Again, in a later lesson, we're gonna take a look at how we could kind of come up with a, any repeating decimal and turn it into a fraction. And last one, we've got a recursive uh, sequence where a sub zero is zero and a sub one is one. And then the next one is the two previous plus the previous. And what would be a sub 10? In this case, we get 55. And that is known as the Fibonacci sequence. So if we have 0, and then the next one is 1, and then the next one says, hey, take those two and add them together, we get 1. And I'll take the, those two and add them together. And now those two and add them together. And then those two and add them together and keep going, you get the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, Fibonacci was an Italian uh, mathematician, kind of before their math, uh, mathematician was actually a, an occupation. Uh, he was really also an accountant where he made his money. Uh, he came up with that. It's really interesting that it has, that se sequence has a ton of applications in, uh, really in biology and genetics and the way that uh, flowers and cones uh, pine cones and things like that uh, have their different nodules and stuff uh, organized. Uh, you can find it uh, in the Fibonacci sequence. All right, we are looking at lesson 9.2, specific types of sequences and series, arithmetic, any time that we're adding the same number over and over. So if the term is generally by a five and then we add four and add four and add four and add four repeatedly, that's going to be arithmetic. So that number that's being added is the common difference. You use the letter D to represent that. And it can be found by taking any term and subtract the one before it, not the one after it, the one before it. So we can take the 20th term and subtract the 19th term and get our common difference. And then the formula for the sequence is that the nth term is the first term plus one less than the position of the term times d. So example number two, find a formula at a sub n for the nth term where we know the common difference is negative seven and the first term is 19. So we'll just replace See what happens. So 19, d is negative 7. Now, we do want to make sure we have parentheses around that because if you don't have it, it's going to really mean subtract 7. When we really know it needs to be multiplied by negative 7. All right. We are going to want to distribute this and combine like terms. And the order doesn't matter. So if you had 26 minus 7 and that's fine. I do kind of like it in an mx plus b situation, so we can make that connection that this type of function uh, is linear, 
uh, it just is um, has a finite domain. All right, checkpoint. Use the same formula. Find the formula for the nth term where we know common difference and the eighth term. Pause here. Restart when you're done. So we're going to use the formula, and what we know is the eighth term, so we're going to go a sub 8 is a sub 1 plus 8 is our position, minus 1, times the common difference 17, and we know that that eighth term is supposed to be 200. This is going to allow us to solve for a sub 1. So 17 times 7, if we subtract that from both sides, we get a sub 1 is 81, back into the original 81 plus n minus 1 times 17. Distribute, combine like terms. Here we go. And might as well we can check it. You can plug in an 8. Make sure you get the 200. Good. And example number 3, the third term of an arithmetic sequence is 29, and the tenth term is 71. So our issue here is for our a sub n, we need to know first term and common difference. We know neither of those things. We do have a couple different terms in there. And the terms generate equations. So we're going to generate two equations with two unknowns. That sounds like a system of equations. I prefer to start with the one that's farther down the list. So I'm going to go with the tenth term first and say that a sub 10 is the first term plus 10 minus 1 times d. And then that's going to end up being 71. And then for our third term, a sub 3, that's going to end up being 29. And the nice thing about the way this is set up is it's just a version of the addition method. If we just subtract the equation straight down, we're going to eliminate the a sub 1. So that minus that, that minus that, we get 42 is equal to 7d, d is equal to 6, and then we can substitute that back into either one of these to find the a sub 1, I kind of like the bottom one. So 29 is equal to a sub 1 plus 12. So that tells us that a sub 1 is 17. We got both of those, now go back into the formula distribute combined like terms. Again, we can kind of check. Plug in a 3, see if you get 29. Plug in a 10, see if you get 71. All right, so that's the sequence part of it. Now the series part of it, if we're adding them up, it must be finite. For these type of sequence to have a sum, it has to be finite. So we can't go to infinity. It wouldn't have a sum for an arithmetic sequence that we're adding up and therefore being an arithmetic series. So it has to be finite, so it means we're allowed to add up 50 things or 1,000 things or three things. It's got to be finite. And our formula is that the sum of the first n things is that many things divided by 2 times the product of the first term plus the last term, a sub n. So this one's important because sometimes we may not necessarily know this, and so the a sub n previously can be useful here. We can use our a sub n formula if we need to. All right, the gentleman here is Carl Friedrich Gauss, as uh, the story was that uh, early in elementary school, third or fourth grade, the teacher had asked him, or asked the class, to add up the first hundred integers from one to a hundred, perhaps just to kind of catch his breath and let them just go to work on their personal chalkboards, slate boards, or whatever they were working with. And uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, being a genius, uh, got it right away, pretty much. He, was, he saw that if he just took the sum, 1, 2, 3, and so on, to 100, and then reversed them and stacked them and added them together, we would get the same sum repeated, 101 plus 101 plus 101, and there would be 100 of those. 
But since he counted it twice, he'd have to divide by 2. So that kind of brings us back to our thing. So however many things divided by 2, that's, that's how many pairs, and then the first one plus the last one. So uh, find the 102nd partial sum of the arithmetic sequence. We need to know three things. How many things are we adding up? What's the first term? What's the last term? That one we don't know. So we're going to have to use what we had learned before to find a sub 102, the last term. So we'll start there. a sub 102 is the first term plus 102 minus 1 times, and you can see it's going down by 6. The common difference is negative 6. Take one of the terms, subtract the one before it. And we get negative 305. So now we're ready to calculate our sum. S sub 102 is equal to 102 divided by 2 times first plus last. If we calculate that, we get negative 204. checkpoint. Find the sum of those without writing them all the ones in the middle, because that's kind of cheating. Pause here. Come back when you're done. All right, the challenge in this one is we know the first, we know the last, we just don't know how many things that we're adding up. And the clue that's going to help us find that is this. We need the position n that goes with the 91. So we're going to start there. a sub n, being the last one, is equal to a sub 1 plus a common difference of 4 times n minus 1. So the last term is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Let's solve for it. So we subtract 3, we divide it by 4, add 1, there we go, we've just found out there's 23 terms. That's the 23rd term. Now we know everything, so S sub 23 is 23 divided by 2 times 3 plus 91, and you get a sum of 1,081. Sigma notation, as we saw in the last lesson, sigma here's our lower limit of summation with our index, K equals 2, so start, start by plugging in a 2 and so on, and stop when we get to 15. So first of all, we could probably go right to the formula. If we start counting at 2 and stop counting at 15, there's going to be 14 things in there. If we're unsure, although we can always do this minus this plus 1 to count our starting value. So we're going to have 14 things. So 14 divided by 2. First term is easy. This is our lower limit. Plug in 2, and you get our first term for this particular series. Plus last term. Well, to get the last term, just take the upper limit of summation and plug that in. So plugging in a 2, 5 times 2 minus 7 is 3. Last term, 15 times 5 minus 7 is 68, and we got our sum. All right, and last earlier I promised, how could we actually get this? And one thing you can explore is differences. So if we take a look at the difference between our terms, and there, and there, and there, okay, we can see a pattern emerge, but it's not the same number. If it was the same number, this would be a linear function. And in fact, it would be an arithmetic sequence. So that one would be an easy one for us to figure out. We could have probably figured out the pattern before, but it's not. So let's take a look at second differences. Second differences. Now those are the same. So what that tells us is if the second differences are constant, then our function is quadratic. So we have 
Essentially, f of n, or a sub n, is equal to a times n squared plus b times n plus c. And then we have three unknowns, a, b, and c here. So if we got three unknowns, we're going to need three equations. Three numbers, each number is going to give us an equation. So if we go with the two, the term, a sub n is the term, two is equal to, and its position is one, so n is one. So a plus b plus c. And then six is equal to, now we're talking about uh, the second position, so this is a sub 2, so n is now 2, 2 squared is 4, so 4 times a plus uh, n is now 2, so b times 2 plus c. And the last one, 12, is equal to, and now we're talking about a sub 3, so n is now 3, 3 squared is now 9 times a plus 3 times b plus c, so it now becomes a uh, system that you would solve for a, b, and c. And back in chapter 7, we solved systems like this. What you would have found out is that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to 0. So our function becomes a sub n is equal to 1n squared plus 1n plus 0. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.